education is supposed to be like uh, I'm, I'm being very realistic here that education is supposed to be like training your people to become taxpayers. What is the point to get them into that trap? Hi, everyone. I'm Rania Kalik with Breakthrough News. Today, we're happy to announce that we're piloting a new program called Overlap with our friends at Wave Media, a private media house in China. This is a global conversation show based on a simple concept. While U.S. elites are working to build a new Cold War environment with China, we want to do the opposite with people-to-people -people dialogue and virtual exchanges that show how much we have in common and how much we have to lose from a new policy of isolation and demonization. The show will have a rotating set of hosts brought in to discuss life, politics, and culture in our respective countries. Here's a taste of what the show has to offer with Albert Wong, a key opinion leader across Chinese social media, talking to Rachel Hu of Breakthrough News. And keep your eye out for our very first episode, coming soon, where I'll be speaking with Albert about Taiwan. We hope you enjoy the conversation and are excited for your feedback in the comments. I'm curious about what how what student loans are like in China, if you guys have this kind of student debt and what education really looks like, because education in the U.S. is it's fully, for the most part, like private, even the public schools, they cost so much money, like it's out of control, like public schools cost every single year about $10,000, $11,000 for state residents. And for if you're out of state going to a public state school, it's going to be almost $30,000 a year. And so it's it's just it's so much money to even go to a state school. So there really isn't any sort of free or affordable option here in the U.S. So I'm curious what it's like in China if you guys have this kind of debt problem, too. Well, actually, we have student loan in China as well. But the tuition fee in China is affordable for most families. In most of the colleges and universities, it costs 5,000 to 8,000 RMB annually, which is like uh, maybe around 1,000 to 1,500 American dollars annually for a bachelor degree. So including the top universities like Tsinghua University and the Peking Universities and for students who are major in education, policing, and willing to have a career in the public service departments. There are uh, also supportive programs for you. For example, if you sign a contract with the government promising uh, to work as a teacher in the last developed area, after graduation, your tuition fee will be covered by the government. Like uh, completely but, covered? Like they, they pay yeah, for everything? Yeah, covered. Oh completely my God. Covered. It's not that much money, right? It's only like $1,000. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but but taking the living cost and accommodation fee into consideration, it's still too much for families from rural area. So here's the case in China. If you are uh, from a poor family, the government will provide you a loan with any, without any interest before graduation. What you need to do is to pay the money back in two or three years after graduation. And the interest rate after graduation is still very low. It's very affordable. Most of the students can pay it back within like uh, six years, which is much more reasonable than it is in the United States, like you mentioned before. $10,000 tuition fee for a year, which takes 17 years for the students to pay back. That's, that's crazy. That's crazy. It's crazy. Those, and that's for state school. Okay. So that's like, yeah. that's like what the average tuition is for schools that are private schools. So like Harvard, Yale, like the big name schools, yeah. it is way more. It's on average $38,000 like for just tuition. That's just tuition. But I, I anecdotally will tell you it's more like $60,000 a year. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, another reason why I chose to uh, go to University of Iowa is that they gave me a scholarship. It's unbelievable. For those students from uh, low-income families in China, universities provide scholarship as long as the, uh, the students meet the grade uh, requirements. So uh, if you study hard enough, you can like, get a lot of support. In addition, part-time jobs are also open for these students in all the universities and uh, uh, the income could cover most of the living costs. In short, as long as you work hard and get the offer, you get all the support from the university, the bank, and the government without being trapped in any financial problem. But 
when it comes to vocational education, we have some very deep rooted stereotype against it, which leads to、uh, less vocational education resources, and current vocational schools are not running very well. And but in China,、uh, uh, China is making a change on it. We have special education resources. We have schools for students with disabilities. And they are all included in the compulsory educational system. If they are、uh, if they are qualified, they can also take the college entrance exam. And we have vocational schools for students who are physically challenged as well, so that they can make their livings with dignities. However,、uh, we only have nearly a two thousand three hundred special schools in China by two thousand twenty one. So. There's room for improvement. That is what what we can take from the United States, because、uh, actually、uh, the United States is very resourceful in this area. Yeah, I mean, vocational education in the United States is available, but it's not widely available. So, like some places, you'll have vocational high schools where you can go off and get trained to do like HVAC, like air conditioning,、um, electric, like being becoming an electrician, a plumber. There are a lot of vocations that are very, of course, necessary for society that we need more training on. But there isn't like always clear pathways to it in terms of having access to that education. Vocational schools are being shut down. I mean, I think you know the the thing in the United States is really that the The emphasis of education has been going to college and going to university. But the thing about university is that, like at the end of the day, like it doesn't even guarantee a job. And so that's also kind of a big part of I think the challenges here in the U.S. is that we do have more schools, and a lot of those schools that we have more schools, and a lot of the reason why we have more schools is because of the way that they ultimately sell their education. Thirty percent of jobs in the U.S. require like one third of the jobs basically require you to have a degree of some sort, and like we just can't afford that. You know. You know, the average person in the U.S. makes like sixty thousand dollars a year, but reality, like my life, people that I grew up with, people that I know, that's not what people make. You know, people make minimum wage, and I think all education should be public because private education, it's all predatory, and especially if you're poor, they know that and they want to take advantage of that. So they they give you these jacked up loans from Sally Mae, which like anyone in the U.S. can tell you, Sally Mae is like miserable to deal with. It's like, like it's like some people get literally eleven. I know people that have gotten eleven percent on their loans. It's like you think a poor person can really. Pay back eleven percent on their loan, like that's not going to、yeah, happen. I mean, it's crazy. It's, it's so true. I mean, what is the point of getting your people into that trap, right? Just, like education is supposed to be like、uh, I'm, I'm being very realistic here. That education is supposed to be like training your people to become taxpayers. What is the point to get them into that trap? <laughs> 